Um, I think that it's definitely attractive when a woman is firm in her beliefs and knows what she believes in and knows what she wants her boundaries to be and isn't, um, doesn't allow herself to be objectified and doesn't allow herself um, to be pushed into situations that aren't necessarily the most comfortable. I think it's awesome when, um, and I respect it so much when, you know, a girl, a girl has firm beliefs and knows what she believes in and is honest from the beginning of a relationship. Uh, yeah, I think that I would tell you that you're being lied to. Um, I think there are a couple things there. Um, I, I'm very blessed with actually not just a, you know, a, a wonderful wife, but also a very great group of, uh, of guy friends. Um, and I can tell you that the ones that are married, the ones that are engaged, the ones that are dating, the ones that are looking to, to date, that are single, um, are all looking for something that you will... It's not the cover of... Uh, glamour or the cover of GQ. I mean, yes, those women are nice, but they're airbrushed, and it's not—it's not real, you know. Um, I think that you need to realize that the reason that someone will fall in love with you and be your your partner for life has very, very little to do with that. Um, as anyone can tell you, that you know, there are hot girls that they open their mouth and you're like, ugh, <laughs> and there are. Uh, Girls that when you meet, uh, maybe you don't think they're the prettiest thing ever, and then a few weeks later you find yourself going, oh, there's something there. And it's not, it's not like, you know, you can't show me your picture on Facebook and I'll know if, oh, if you're <laughs> attractive or not. It's, it's a lot more complicated than that. Um, I think that society definitely tells girls that, you know, to be popular and to be in, you have to wear the, the really short skirts and you have to wear the really short tops, and that's not true at all. Um, I mean, a woman's beauty is powerful regardless of what she's wearing. I think society has a message to to women too, um, like just from hearing locker room talk, uh, I hear what I hear most from girls and guys um, anywhere is a focus on external beauty. It's a focus on uh, what can be seen. And the most beautiful and valuable things in this world cannot be seen. They cannot be uh, touched or tasted or they're beyond the senses. And so, um, so, so much of what it means to be, in my mind, a beautiful woman is missed by what is talked about and what women, the, way, the ways women are, encur women are encouraged by the media and by their friends. Most of the time, what I see is it's missing uh, what is most important, which is, um, you hear it, it sounds like a cliche, you know, internal <laughs> beauty, you know, work on your inside, ladies. Um, but um, it's so true, and, and you, you don't hear that. You don't hear talk about um, holiness. Like, we just had the Feast of the Holy Family, and, you know, you hear, you hear women talking to other women about everything, <laughs> most of the time, except, you know, virtue and, and internal character and... and um, True love, like you hear the words "true love," but you don't. It's not really. I don't. I don't feel like it's really focusing on love in con in the context of holiness. Sure, I think that I would advise them to really think about the woman that they are wanting to be five or ten years from now and to keep that in perspective in the choices that they're making today because what they do today does affect their lives, does affect your lives, you know, three, five, ten years from now. And the things that you do now, you're going to have to live with the rest of your life. You can't go back and change something that you've done. So when you go off to make a decision, make sure it's the right one. Make sure it's something that when you look back five, ten years from now, it's something you're going to be happy with doing. Something to always be mindful of is don't Get, look around you and see what everyone around you is settling for and see how much better, like, how much happier you could be uh, with a life in Christ. And that's something that um, is easily, it's very easy to brush that aside. But uh, when, you, when you accept that into your life, chastity comes easily and happiness comes easily. Um, not that everything is going to be great or that everything is going to be um, easy. But we, we, we are able to understand life better. And so don't be afraid to hold yourselves to a higher standard and the men in your lives to a higher standard that the way that God ordered us to be is the way that we need to act. 
Um, what would I say? Okay, we talk so much about protecting the uh, environment and God's creation nowadays, uh, especially with you know the trees and the planet and the animals and stuff. But each and every one of you uh, is God's creation, and each and every one of you is called to, to protect yourself and protect your dignity uh, and help help your brothers in Christ uh, protect your dignity and their dignity by dressing modestly and acting modestly. You know, chastity is a virtue. It's a great virtue that is a sign of life and love that says we respect the human person. So I, I think we're all called to that, and I really want to encourage you guys to uh, follow that call. Um, I guess my overall advice would just be you're worth it. Every one of you is an incredible young lady and never be in a relationship where you don't feel everything is in place and never settle and never never settle for a guy and never lower your standards for someone else because you're worth it and if you wait it might it might take longer but if you wait and you are firm in what you believe in and you know how incredible you are as a lady of God you'll find him and he'll love you that much more for it so my message to, to you ladies is um, that guys need you and they don't need you for sex, they don't need you um, to look great or to compliment them. What they need you for is to encourage them to be a man. Like, I, I, you know, I encourage you to be strong and to hold out and to kick butt and to be warriors, spiritual warriors. Um, because guys need that. Guys need women to call the strength out of them. Like men have an amazing capacity by God to be strong. Sometimes we need a kick in the can and we need you not to sell out, not to put out, and uh, not to be weak in your own way. Like you need to be strong as the woman God made you to be so that men can learn how to be strong. Men can learn how to be men, really, truly, from women, from beautiful, charismatic, dynamic, holy women. You know, women who don't put out for attention or dress for attention or uh, try to stimulate men for attention or whatever, you know, like to, to really um, be who you're called to be by God. And that is what empowers guys to step up. Uh, we, need, we need a kick. So um, I just encourage you to be holy and to be who God made you to be. Okay, um, talking to girls that I haven't met uh, and by the way, I told Sarah that I dated an Ursuline girl when I was in high school. Woohoo! Uh, though it wasn't the one that I married. Yeah. Um, but I will tell you that I, I met my wife when I was 13. Um, oh. I obviously didn't know that she was my wife, and we didn't start dating in middle school or something. But, I mean, we went to the same school together. She was a year behind me. Um, and I will tell you this, that uh, having known her for that long, I knew her when she was sitting in your chair. Um, and even though we didn't date until we were older... Um, I can tell you that I appreciate the woman that she was, even at your age. Um, and you have a lot to offer. And you're not the whole person that you're going to be because you're still figuring that all out. Um, and that's great. But while you're figuring all that out, make sure that you have the self-confidence and the self-awareness and the faith that God has a wonderful plan for, uh, for your life that you can be chased. Um, and, you know, you just don't have to... You don't owe a guy anything, you know. You, you, owe, you owe yourself a lot, um, but there's nothing you can do to make yourself uh, any better, any more beautiful than what you already are. Uh, so just be comfortable in that, and you know, have a lot of fun. Uh, the next the next years are great, and uh, and enjoy them. So good luck. <laughs> My message would be that I know that it's hard because of pressure coming in from your friends or like the media, you know, the outside world, everyone's telling you to have sex, have it now, you know, have it often with multiple people. And it's just not, it's not something that would be good for you. It's not something that you need to do, that you should feel like you need to do. You should feel that you have every right to wait for marriage to have sex, to make sure that it's meaningful with who, whichever person you know that you finally decide that this is the person that's right for me, this is the person that I want to spend the rest of my life with, you know, that should be the person. That's my message. <laughs>